Welcome to the UpstreamLife.com. I'm your founder and editor Vishal Krishna. You know, I've been in love with uh, sustainable energy, renewable energy for years now. I thought uh, ecotourism or uh, driving an EV is real sustainability, but it may not. I may have to invest in some of these assets. Doing that for me or any one of you who would love to invest in renewable energy assets is a company called Incept.Green and I've been lucky enough to host uh, the co-founder Murli. Murli, hi, how are you? How are you? Man? Good. Thanks. I'm very good. What is Incept.Green? Okay, Incept is a platform. Mm -hmm. Incept is a method or an enabler to get individuals like Vishal, like me, to participate in the climate movement. It enables you to put a small amount of money, even a large amount of money, but you can start small. You get a small ownership of a renewable asset and you get entitled to the cash flows of that asset. It's a profitable business. It gives you a return which is superior to any other stable investment product. Like an FT. It's much better than an FT. Okay. Substantially better than an FT. So great. So guys, just go check out Incept.Green. Uh, they start you up as, uh, as little as 500 or 100? As little as 500 rupees. In fact, you can start by paying nothing. Sample the product. If you like what you see, you're you know, we welcome you to come and invest as low as 500. Lovely. I have to call out my sponsors. My sponsor is Finverse.Guru, an app that allows you to understand finance. It allows you to make sure that you don't make mistakes while you're doing a business. And it's called Finverse.Guru. Go check them out. Thank you very much. But enjoy this interview with Murli. Thank you. Murli, thank you for being on the show. And uh, at the Upstream Life, we are fascinated with uh, renewables. But when you came to me and said uh, you're launching a platform or you've already launched a platform which allows people like me to invest in uh, renewable assets or energy assets, uh, it amazed me. And Incept Green is the company. So talk about what Incept Green does quickly for the benefit of our audience. Then we'll go deeper into the economics of it. Yeah, before uh, economics, obviously, and before what Incept does, just a 10 second sort of, a, you know, a, 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 a beginning, right? So we are all aware that climate is a problem. Each individual is now fully aware of this, uh, this large macro issue facing the globe. Today, largely, the issue of climate is being handled by large corporates and government. And we want to see, is there a way we can bring climate action to the individual? And Incept is one such means to bring climate action to the individual. So what we do is there are a lot of renewable energy projects starting with solar which are getting installed for the purpose of electricity, solar and electricity consumption by say corporates, by industrial customers. And we are saying that people who build these projects on the rooftops or in locations for the corporates, these developers, they have to go out and build new projects. And we want to then take over these projects, fractionalize the ownership of this and permit every individual, every Indian to be able to participate by investing some money on a fractional ownership basis and making substantial return for themselves in the process. And this frees up capital and allows the developer go and build more and more projects in more the country. More assets in the process. More assets that in the process. More investments for me also. More investment for you as well. Very, very, very nice. This is an interesting aspect, right? We, in being in Bangalore, I'm used to this fractional ownership and all that of right. real estate. Right. Well, how did you conceptualize this? You have four founders, right? Four co-founders? Right. You want so, to tell their names and you can go into Incept. Yes, right? our CEO is uh, Gurinder Sandhu. Mm -hmm. He has uh, several, close to three decades of experience in the B2C marketing uh, uh, side of uh, things. He's worked at Airtel, he's worked at Coke, he's worked at uh, Tata. Uh, mostly in the consumer side of uh, uh, business. Ritesh Goshal is his uh, colleague who's worked with Guri for several years. Again, 25 plus years experience in marketing, consumer, consumer brand um, uh, building. Uh, Ranjit and I, we have very similar backgrounds. Both of us graduated from IIT and uh, we've been in the oil and gas sectors in the early part of our career. And for the last 20 years or 18 years, we've been in power sector in India. The first five, six years in hydro and thermal. And for the last 10, 12 years, more only in renewables. We built several renewable projects across India, uh, working initially for ourselves in our own company, Orange Powergen, and subsequently, uh, we, you know, we worked for private equity investors, and most recently, we were with another large corporate uh, building their portfolio from 1,500 megawatt. Strong team getting together, Murli. Strong team. Thanks. I mean, it's, it's not like, a, like <coughs> I'm taking your words uh, right from you. Basically, a 19-year-old graduate cannot do this kind of a business. It's a complex business, and ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into that. You said strata ownership of these energy assets, right? Fractional so, ownership. Yeah, fractional ownership. Brilliant. Uh, let's get into the econ deep economics of this, right? When you, you've already got two high pay, I mean, big customers with you already. That's amazing. How does it work? Say somebody comes and develops a solar project or a wind project. And uh, usually, what is the upside for the developer? Let's start there. And then how do the, how do the investors like me, how do retail investors like me come in? 
and how does it help them in the process? Yeah. So uh, uh, again, so so what's happening today is uh, the there is a cost of energy, cost of electricity, which the state grid uh, charges a customer. Let's say there is a factory. You own a factory. You're paying the state grid some amount of money. A uh, developer comes. He spends three, four months convincing you and telling you, listen, if you went solar, you can actually reduce your price and you can get a carbon benefit, right? So the combination of these, you will take a decision, yes, okay, I want to do it. But hey, it's going to cost me a lot of money, so uh, Mr. Developer, why don't you invest the money and you put up the asset on my uh, for me and I will give you money on a monthly basis based on the number of units you generate. So the developer says, yes, okay. So then he goes and builds this project on your roof or on your land or whatever. The electricity comes to you. You are saving money, you are getting a carbon benefit, but now the developer is stuck he's earning a return on this project but he's put all the capital what we are now saying is the developer uh, has let's say put 100 rupees he is generating say 10 units of power every month for you you're paying him we come in and we say mr developer why don't you give that asset to me we free your capital you go somewhere else you can build one more project and then for me to fund this i get uh, 50 uh, Vishals uh, or Murleys or retail investors and all of them own maybe 10 kilowatt each or 5 kilowatt each or 1 kilowatt each or 100 kilowatt each, whatever. And to the extent of the ownership, that the money which the factory, your factory is paying, was supposed to pay the developer, now gets routed through us and goes to him. So this is the business model. We are structured in a way which is we are fully regulatory compliant. So there is no, you know, there's no concern. There is an income right. which comes to the retail customer. The return is around 12%, which is much better than a fixed deposit. It's a very simple business. This asset will continue to operate for 15 or 20 or 25 years. So it's like an assured income and they have the right to exit after a certain minimum lock-in. So it gives you the benefits of liquidity, a good yield, and a contribution to the renewable uh, ecosystem. Talk about the history of these assets. Uh, these projects being tried uh, elsewhere in the world. You said Europe has a couple of these projects. Uh, talk, the talk business about, model. Yes, talk yes. About the model. Yeah, so the business model. Uh, this is an evolving business model, and fractional ownership, as you as you mentioned, right? Uh, this whole idea is evolving as we speak, and uh, certain companies in Europe have started this thing in terms, you know, for the renewable asset class. We are doing this here. The reason why we believe it's a great time is the regulatory framework for electricity generation is getting simpler. Uh, everybody understands that there is a climate uh, requirement for moving into solar. The central government and all the state governments are putting their entire weight to make sure that more and more solar wind assets come. And you know the, the, the amount of power that the Indian system requires is tremendous. Even today, I, I don't have the exact number, but I think the per capita energy consumption in India is around 1,200 units. Uh, if you look at China, it's five or 6,000 units. If you look at the US, it's 25,000 units. So we have a long way to go, and all of this can't come from coal generation. A lot of it has to come from renewable. So I think the country is growing prosperous. The regulatory framework is enabling these kind of, you know, these Changes. projects to come up. And we need more and more retail participation, because at an individual level, everyone knows that they have to participate in the climate movement. The climate movement, very important for people like me. Um, most of us don't know how to contribute back. So this is a good way, right? Absolutely. It's a very great way. And the platform, our inset platform, will also tell you if you put 500 rupees, if you put 5,000 rupees, if you put 50,000 rupees, how many kgs of CO2 you're actually contributing towards direct abatement. And you have a certain lifestyle. You might say in your mind, I want to become net zero. How do I get net zero? while making money you actually earn money while doing it as opposed to you know giving money and you know it's not this is not charity this is not like giving money and i i'm not making light of charities yes. charities are doing great work but here you put money you save to your degree of the extent of contribution a uh, carbon abatement at the same time you earn a very good return which is superior to fd substantially which carries very little risk and um, now overall, it's a win-win for everybody. Morley, you should also set in light that you may be driving an EV car, but it's actually not contributing to carbon neutrality, right? You want to draw that point as to why this is impactful. Yeah, no, there is definitely a, a positive impact of EV cars, and I'm not taking it away. Yes, but indeed. if you see in the Indian grid especially, uh, the Indian grid is largely coal. And if you look at the carbon intensity of the Indian grid, it's about, uh, I, I don't have the exact number again, but I think it's roughly about uh, 800 grams of uh, CO2 per unit, right? And if, if you if you take the weak, uh, you know, the transmission infrastructure, the losses that the distribution the TND, grid suffers, the TND losses, net-net, by the time the EV car draws electricity and the carbon uh, footprint of that electricity compared to, say, a diesel or petrol car, the difference has substantially reduced. If you were running on hydropower or nuclear power or wind power or solar power, then you're right. Then there's a contribution of your EV car is, is, is significant. But in the Indian grid, till our renewable con um, percentage increases much more, uh, the EV cars do not 
deliver the promise that they otherwise can deliver. Right? Okay. This is great. I think people watching this should go to Incept Green and they can straight away participate and buy the assets. They can buy fractional ownership of the yes. assets. Yes, they it's can, ready. They can do we, we've onboarded day. a couple of assets. We have a strong pipeline okay. coming up. As, and yeah. as what, 500 rupees to 100 rupees? What's they the can do uh, our minimum size. Uh, in fact, what we've just said is sample it today for free. And if you like it, you can within 60 days, you can actually come and put as low as 500 rupees. Okay, it's interesting, right? The four of you get together. Some of the business challenges I want to ask you. Uh, one is you have to have these assets where in your website you clearly say you have to go green, move away from thermal. Uh, are there enough assets like this? Uh, do, do you want to go to brownfield, greenfield projects? What, what, how would you get the acquire these customers? We uh, so on the asset side, on on the, on the project side, we will uh, take assets only once they are operating and demonstrate that they are good. We don't want to take construction risk. We don't want to take development risk. Yeah. So imagine uh, you know you want to buy fractional ownership in a in a in a in a commercial building. You you will come in only when the building is ready and the rental customer is in place. You, we, we don't want to pre-sell it before all of that is in place. So that way it de-risks the investor completely, right? So but that builds trust. Also. Builds trust and they know it's a real thing. T tomorrow you, you're driving past the factory, you want to sit and go and take a look at it, you can actually go and see your project, right? Actually, you can tell people I own part of the power generation. They can, they can go and say that they own part of it, right? So that's on the one thing. The second thing is in terms of size. The market is starting to grow really big. There was a time when, you know, commercial and industrial customers were going slow on putting, uh, buying uh, solar uh, energy because of the regulatory framework which I mentioned has improved substantially. The costs also, previously it used to be not too cheaper or almost as costly as a grid power, today that cost has dropped. So combination of commercial factors and regulatory factors are in place, the market is growing and everybody knows that this is the future, this has to be done. This is interesting, right? Uh, for me, uh, a company like you, this is the first of its kind in India, would you say? Or uh, there are other competitors doing this or dabbling with the energy space? I wouldn't call them competitors. I think this space is so large, even if 25 INCEPs come tomorrow, there is space for everybody. Give us some numbers on the green energy side, on the renewable side. What are the kind of projects that have been, you know, when if you look at India's total power generation, uh, how much of it is thermal versus how much of it is green and that and that way they know the opportunity that they can become investors in this chain that's going to happen in India. Sure, but rather than giving you the current mix, let me tell you that the, the, the government has announced, the central government has announced but by 2030 we want to have 500 gigawatts of renewable, right? And that means 40 to 50 gigawatts, 40 to 50,000 megawatts of renewable they're expecting every year. Now we know that that's a huge challenge and you know, in it, it's probably good to shoot for the stars and you'll probably reach the moon, but we will get there. We may not get 500, but we will be 350 or 400. Which is still good. Which is excellent. In 2015, when, when the central government, uh, when the prime minister said, we want to get 175,000 uh, megawatts by a certain time frame, we of didn't solar, get there. Of solar, no, of, of overall, yeah. of 175 overall, of which 100,000 should be solar, uh, 40,000 should be wind, and you know there was a breakup of how they had to do it. 60,000 was wind and some small hydro, some biomass, etc. We didn't get there 100 percent, but we largely got there. 80 percent. Yeah, we largely got there, right? And I think that's great. So you set a high bar and you can get there, right? And that's what they've done. They've demonstrated that it can be done by uh, enabling financing, enabling project clearances, enabling regulatory framework. So the, all the states and the center is doing this. And what is the growth? Uh, today, India builds between 15 to 20 gigawatt of uh, uh, capacity every year. The target is 40, but we're 15, 15 to 20,000. And this is growing every year. Out of this, solar is a large contributor. About 60 to 70% comes from solar. And out of this, there are large solar projects which we are not touching. They are going straight to the, you know, through the central government to the various states. We are talking about the other sector, which is industrial and commercial customers who require power in the one to ten megawatt range. The, that is a space where a lot of projects are now increasingly being built, and sooner or later these will get opened up for fractional ownership, uh, being enabled by Incept. People like you. This is interesting. Now again, I want to go back to the complication part. A lot of the kids watching this same thing. Are you a tech company? Are you a fintech company? Are you a reg tech company? You're a combination of all these. Hence, it's a it's a thing that not a college graduate can do. Let's start with the regulation. Why is it complex? But it can. But if you stick to the regulation, it's a world of opportunity where you know regulations also helping companies like you grow. Yeah. So the regulatory part is you know when you want to put a solar project today, uh, you know it's. One part is just putting up the asset, but then connecting this asset into the grid. There are certain rules and, uh, you know, there's a certain framework 
for being enab enabling this power to actually flow into grid. So that is a regulatory framework. Today, if you put a project here and your factory is somewhere else, for me to transfer this power through the system to you, there is a certain framework. Some states it's easy, some states it's not. So each state has a has a has a um, procedure and a regulatory framework. So you have to follow that framework, right? So, and there are time of day restrictions. There are certain pricing restrictions. So you know we need to understand some of these things. So that's on the regulatory side. There is a technical issue as well, right? Over the last 12 years, we've been building so many solar projects. We understand a lot of the technical nuances. Imagine, you know, you're, you're constructing a, a, a real estate project, right? A good real estate developer will deliver a good project. A poor fellow will get into trouble. And there are so many troubled real estate guys, right? So this is something we know how to do. So therefore, uh, there is a tech in the terms of a hard tech. There is a tech in the sense that you know how we are running the platform how we are enabling the frictionless uh, way of you know you coming in getting a return and going without the complication i think that frictionless element is the software tech part of it the hardware tech is actually the asset understanding the asset its performance its monitoring you know making sure that it runs so there is a lot of tech and of course there are regulations we have to follow that you know i want to understand the lock in you said there's a lock in when i come in as a customer would it be 3 years 5 years no the asset itself has a life of 15 to 20 years depending on the nature of the power purchase agreement but uh, we are uh, proposing a 12 month lock in to begin with and at the end of 12 months you're allowed to exit that's interesting that's that's almost like uh, but on the taxation front now people would listen to this say hey, this is very interesting would i be taxed as income or a capital gains tax how does this work what instrument is it it's not a mutual fund uh, but it's it's different it's different so uh, so the uh, the the way it will work is if you put in 100 rupees and we give you 12 rupees uh, or 11 rupees or 12 rupees 1 rupee a, if i give you 1 rupee a month it's almost like a 12% yield right so that 1 rupee a month uh, on a 100 rupee investment is your income and you have to pay a tax on your income the way you know the way you manage your, your tax. it's like you know even you put 100 rupees on an ft and you get 7% return you have to pay a tax on that 7% it's not tax free similarly we are not tax free everybody manages their uh, income tax the way they have to manage it and they'll yes, do it this will follow income tax then. it will follow no the, a lot of it will follow as income tax towards the end of the the life uh, of the years. asset yeah you know at the end of 15th year 16th year we actually start repaying your money mm. you we, we do repay a small portion of it every every year but that's small but after some number of years we start repaying more and more of your money mm. so your 100 rupee actually comes back right so that is a capital return so uh, mm -hmm. obviously that return has no tax because you put the hundred, you got the hundred back, okay. and the return on the on you know the the interest element of it is taxable. Uh, it's interesting. So every year, if I put in a hundred, if I put in hundred now and exit in one year, I get back a percentage. You get hundred plus twelve. Plus twelve. That's yes. A, that's the charge. Okay. And Twenty years later, I get a capital appreciation. You're saying there is no appreciation. You get your hundred back. Okay. Because oh, yeah, I get the hundred deposit back. You get your deposit with, back. Obviously, you paid the twelve percent, which you, is. You've taxable. already got the twelve every okay. year, and then you get your hundred back. And the hundred is not taxable, I'm sure. Hundred is not, not taxable. taxable. And this hundred, we don't give it in one shot in the end. We start repaying it every year in, in small, small bits. Okay, and the, and typically uh, people would be very interested now. I've invested hundred, and by its twelve percent for twenty years, and obviously it's uh, it's very stable then. It's very stable, super stable, hmm? super stable. And and the yield is obviously, de and again depends on state government regulations. Uh, and power is going to be a sector that's going to stay because these are contracts that are long term. Contracts, these are long term right? contracts. Like when a company signs up, it'll be about five rupees per, per unit for generation. anywhere between three and and, and five rupees uh, anywhere between three and a half and five rupees Dip every project is different every uh, you know the location is different the sunlight is different if you're in a cloudy area you get less sunlight so what we do is we do a technical assessment based on historical 30 40 years data every location has a sunlight uh, you know uh, a sort of an assessment and based on that assessment the project is designed uh, this is all done by the developer because the developer knows all of this right and then we assess this we look at the performance of the asset and based on that we procure this and we are not, what, what is the guarantee to the investors? What we're saying is, this is the sunlight, mm -hmm. this is the number of units that is expected to generate, this is what the customer pays. When if these uh, happen, you get your money. And we expect it to happen because so many projects are running in India, they're all generating money. Yeah, the renewable as an asset class is a very, very stable, reliable uh, asset class, especially solar. Because... Um, there is no market risk. Correct. There's only sunlight risk. But sun comes every day. It comes at 6 a.m. It comes at 6 a.m. It's not, it doesn't come, right? So the, the point is, it's not like tomorrow the tomato price went up to 200. Day after tomorrow, it came down to 2.5. We don't have any of those risks. Mm -hmm. It's a flat contract. It's have predictable. Very good customers on the other end. For them, if they went bankrupt, it's a problem. But if they didn't go bankrupt, it's unlikely these solid good customers are going bankrupt. They're going to continue to pay. Why will they pay? Because it's cheaper than the electricity grid and they definitely need the power. So they will pay. Okay. So therefore, you're, you're de-risked to a very large degree. 
Murli, uh, you know, those are insightful conversations. I want to talk about what is the advantage for the developer? Uh, we briefly talked about him executing the project and exiting quickly. What does it mean to uh, a large uh, renewable projects developer? Uh, is it Would he be very happy to exit because he's getting upfront cash and therefore go build something else and therefore partner with you exclusively saying, I'll launch multiple projects of green, you know, of this green energy, maybe re any form of renewable, and we can sell it as an investment class. Is that is that the advantage for them while they work with Incept Green? Oh, of course, that's a big advantage. Uh, you know, in, in the developer world, there are some big developers who are adequately financed, and then the medium and the small developers who are not adequately financed, right? A, a large uh, private equity investor would not invest in, a, in, in somebody who deploys, say, 50 crores or 100 crores a year. That's just too small for them. So, but for these guys, 50 crores, are not, for, not just for these guys, for anybody, 50 crores or 100 crores of deployment a year is not trivial. It's, it's meaningful, right? So they, they go undertake the entire sales cycle. They spend six months with a customer, convince him, they, then they spend two, three months getting the bank loan, installing the project. And they put a lot of their money and effort. We give them an opportunity to take out either a part of it or all of it. That's a uh, commercial conversation with them. And that way, it helps that developer become a bigger player. Right. And that is, a, a, that is I think, a, a fundamental enabler of sorts. Right. We, we need the capital. We, if you are having, having a target of 40 gigawatt a year, we need the capital to Pro. invest into this. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, I think that's a beautiful advantage for them. But that means manufacturing is also growing in India. So they can go to more clients and, you know, work with more plants or more buildings or whatever. Absolutely. I mean, manufacturing is growing and that's certainly a demand. But even the existing demand, I mean, you asked a question about how much renewable penetration in the grid. I mean, I don't have the numbers, but I think it's around 12 or 15 percent. I mean, that's that's the renewable contribution today. So there is a lot of space wow. for renewables to grow in the country. Huge space. Huge space. Existing demand. Then there is a future demand. Right. Okay. You're a, I mean, the way we spoke about, you have a product called, it's a DigiSolar company. Right, we call it DigiSolar. But you're saying that you can add DigiWind, you can go into EVs later if you wanted. There are many things that you can play with when it comes to renewables. Absolutely. This is our opening uh, because we are, you know, we are getting developers who have already installed solar projects and we are uh, helping uh, fund the growth of the sector on solar. But the same concept applies to wind. If somebody uh, owns five wind turbines or 10 wind turbines, 30 megawatts being sold to say five, six customers, the investment for that uh, developer say 30 or 50 crores, we can release that 50 crores, right? So DigiWind, tomorrow, and now if you see the government is pushing a lot on biofuels, the ethanol blend has moved up from two, 3% in our petrol, and the target is to go to 13% or 15%. So a lot of these projects are being built next to sugar mills or other places where the waste from the mill is taken and ethanol is created, right? And ethanol is being blended. So this is another green fuel. This is completely coming from the bio and the system. used in factories or in uh, no, tractors and cars? No, no. In your car today, there is a already, in, you know, all the oil marketing companies yeah. are blending, blending ethanol in your petrol. So that's Correct. already there. They are trying to increase the blend because we, a, it gives two benefits. It reduces your import. And secondly, it gives you energy security. And thirdly, it's it gives you... Say biofuels being talked about after a long time, uh, around the last decade, just before t uh, 2005 and 10, a lot of people spoke biofuels. It's still in, uh, it's still running, is it? So a lot of talk happened and uh, biofuels have a lot of challenges. Mm. But I think the good thing is technologically things have improved substantially. Mm. Again, regulatory, access to capital, a lot of things have improved. Government will. So, you know, a bunch of things have fallen into place. And, you know, there are countries like Brazil, etc., which are only biofuel. Right. But uh, India is moving along that path. And, uh, you know, we, we get multiple benefits, right? Climate, energy security, reducing imports, you know, so many, uh, so many benefits. That's another class. So ethanol, uh, CBG, the government is giving a huge push for compressed biogas, right, which is compressed natural gas. So what happens is you put waste, you digest the waste. You know, there is paddy straw in the north. We know how much pollution impact is there. So instead of burning the fields, uh, burning the, the leftover in a field after you uh, harvest the paddy, you can put this into a digester. The digester generates methane. The methane is then used to create, you know, energy needs. This is coming from bio. Mm -hmm. It's completely natural. It's completely green. It helps India reduce its imports. There's a price reduction. There is a carbon benefit. But that gentleman who's put up that company, that asset, that's a 100 crore investment or 80 crore investment of which 60 to 70 percent is funded by the banks and his personal contribution is 20 or 30 crores. We can release that, right? So it'll go into bio. 
Tomorrow, let's say there's a fleet operator. A fleet operator has 50 mm -hmm. EVs or 100 EVs or 200 EVs. Typically, a fleet operator may not invest and own all the EVs. They get somebody else to own the asset. And then we can release that. So we, we are basically trying to release capital for the growth of the uh, renewable energy, the climate action sector. It's at least a three-pronged approach. One is developers. You have to access good tenants. You have to make sure retail investors are protected. And this is a, um, and, and obviously digital is a layer on top of that for the experience. Correct. How do developers discover you or do you discover them? The or process the, is this. Or, or the rental guys come and say, boss, uh, you know, there is, uh, this company has developed it. Uh, they're looking for an opportunity to sell off the asset to retail investors and they come to you. What is the sell, sell like for you guys? So uh, we've just started. Yes. So we have a few developers who are talking to us. But the reality is uh, we've been in this, uh, you know, for 12 years. This, is, this solar as a system started about 10, 12 years ago. Correct. And we've been there from the day it started. Yeah, with your experience with other companies. Yeah, with yes, other companies, right? We've been in the renewable space. So there, is, there are very few developers in the country who we don't know on a personal basis. So, uh, so, so for us to reach out to solar and wind developers is fairly straightforward. So people doing anything from 1 megawatt to 5 megawatt, the many? There are many of them. Yeah, many of them. Okay. So first of all, there are two. One is on the developer side. Mm -hmm. Second is on the customer side. So the customers typically buy 1 to 5 megawatt, 1 to 10 megawatt in that range. The developers could do standalone projects, or they could build a slightly larger project and supply to more than one customer from the same place. So both models work. Okay. For the for the customer, retail customer, they'd be saying, hey, are you SEBI regulated? Are you regulated by IRDA or RBI? You said that you're compliant with everybody. Yes. T tell them that their money is safe. Yeah. So when, when you say the money is safe, we, the, the, the project expects a certain amount of sunlight, a certain amount of generation, and the customer makes a payment, right? So this is a commercial business. On the basis of this, the money is absolutely safe because these are strong, hard cash flow generating assets. They've been proven for the last 10 years. Not a single solar project, to my memory, has defaulted on any of the bank loans, right? They continue to pay their shareholders. They continue to pay their lenders. Banks fall over each other to lend to a solar project because they know it's so safe, right? So in this scenario, you know, and the sunlight comes on time every day. So therefore, in this scenario, the money is really, really compared to any other, uh, you know, instrument, alternate in instrument, etc. This is much safer because it's you've locked in contract for 15 or 20 years. And these are marquee tenants because when I saw the uh, the platform, you had marquee tenants' names written there. Yes, I won't yes. name them now. Yes, but that's true, correct? Yes, that's true. So that's true. the that's the trust that you're building in as well. Absolutely. So we are. Uh, uh, Assessing the project quality on a technical level and the customer quality, right? So we, we rate our customers and, you know, they have a rating and, and we want to make sure that the customers who are buying this electricity are super solid because then, uh, then you know, it's, 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 it's a completely safe uh, okay. sort of a transaction. Okay. Uh, you spoke about the opportunity in terms of uh, the renewable energy generation business itself, huge opportunity. Where, what, what's the opportunity for your team now? Where do you want to be 12 months, 18 months down the line? Sign up more projects, growth, raise money from investors. What are you doing at this point in time? So, uh, uh, a good question. So, uh, we've just started, right? We're barely a couple of weeks, few weeks old. Uh, our objective is to, so we, we've already have a pipeline of projects which we can onboard onto our platform. We've onboarded a couple of them. And now we are signing up customers to come on board. So, we've got a fair amount of interest from both uh, people who are willing to give a slightly larger check, you know, 50,000, 1 lakhs of a check, and from people who are willing to give 500, 5,000 rupees. So a combination of these, we start on onboarding these, um, uh, the, the, the investors. And once these projects see closure, I'll bring the next project. To bring that project, we have to uh, actually spend money and buy the project. So the capital for all of that has been more or less organized. So all of that is in place. That's my. That's our job really, right? Okay, to okay. identify projects and make sure that all of these things fall into line. Four co-founders, uh, you guys in different regions of India. How do you manage? Well, Guri and uh, uh, Ritesh, they sit in Gurgaon. And, and, you know, they are the, the marketing B2C guys. So the entire team is based out of Gurgaon. We've got a bigger team, of course. They are just the co-founders. Ranjit's in Noida. I'm in uh, Bangalore. But I go to Delhi every alternate week. I'm there, uh, you know, a lot of time. And uh, this is a pan-India business, right? There'll be a lot of uh, activities and there's a lot of travel. So I don't think uh, COVID has shown us that, you know, you can actually work uh, very effectively without having to be in the office 24-7. You go there from time to time whenever needed. The rest of the time, you do what you have to do. Great. I, I wish you all the best, but I cannot let you go that easily. Incept.green is the website. Incept.green is the website. The, the, you know, the movement is starting. Come on, guys. We want all of you guys to go take a look at the website, sample the product. If you like it, invest in it. If you don't like it, give us feedback and we'll improve. That's great. So how do you unwind as a, a 
as a co-founder. A lot of work, you know, you know, a lot of people to meet. How do you unwind? Uh, you know, over the years, I, I, I do a lot of uh, running. So every uh, two or three days, I run about 10, 12 kilometers. So that's one big thing. And um, you know, I watch TV in the night. So, <laughs> I, you know, we, we read books and, you know, all of that. But specifically from a, from a more targeted, specific thing, uh, I love the outdoors. So uh, every morning I'm out. I may not be running every day, but I'm out every day. 10, 12 kilometers, so that in, involves intense uh, body training, stretching. Any particular shoes you like? <laughs> well, uh, I do. In fact, uh, there, there is... Uh, there is uh, Brooks, so that's uh, that's a good uh, good pair of shoes. I use. It's good to meet a Brooks person. People usually talk uh, Asics or Nike. It's always good to meet a Brooks <laughs> or a Mizuno. <laughs> a Mizuno know, as well, yeah. Right, so great to have you on the show. Thanks a lot. All the best to you. And guys, go subscribe to Incept.green is the website. The company is Incept Green. Thank you. Mike. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye.